Are you feeling stressed far too often? When an area of life feels really messy and stressful, it can be really difficult to know where to even begin trying to make changes. And even the thought of making changes can feel stressful in itself. So today we're actually talking about some simple ways to evaluate these areas of life that feel overwhelming so that you can see where your time is being spent, what might need to change, and how to just make simple shifts that still feel doable. Are you ready to stop the chaos, the stress, the overwhelm that's filling your life? I'm Renee Matt, and together you and I are going to build simple routines that are going to change your life. When you put these habits into practice, you're going to be able to organize your life in a way where you can be there for your family, pay off your debt, save money, your house can stay organized, you don't have to stress about what's for dinner, and you still get time for yourself. So without further ado, let's get started. Welcome to the Routine Advantage Podcast. When an area of life feels overwhelming, it can be so hard to know where to start. And my own journey kind of began about a year and a half ago when it came to my process of shifting things around and journaling. And even if you're not a journaler, hear me out because before this process started, I didn't journal at all. And I had kept a diary for a very, very short period of time when I was a child, and I never stuck to it. It wasn't something that I did consistently. And I always liked the idea and the the thought of journaling because it seemed very peaceful, and I knew a lot of people that really enjoyed it, but it just wasn't something I ever took the time to do. And I felt like my time could be spent better elsewhere. I was very guilty of that as well. And about a year and a half ago, um, it was, yeah, it's probably about a year and a half ago now, I was part of a challenge to do this journaling process. It was a 30-day journaling challenge. And what it was uh, meant to do was to try to do it in the mornings. And you could do it at other times if you needed to, but the challenge was focused on trying to do a morning routine with a journaling session. And it was setting the timer for 10 minutes and you just just pour your heart out on a paper. <laughs> like that's all you did. And you didn't have to write anything specific, but there were some prompts of what you could write about and things like that. And this whole process was so calming and relaxing to me that it got a lot out onto paper of what I was feeling. So at that time, I was I was in a similar situation where I had a full-time job and I had a side business but it was a different setup. So I still had the same job that I have now as far as my full-time job goes, but my side business was focusing more on a direct sales business. And I still am um, with that company and it will be shifting over to an affiliate model soon, but I it's a beauty company and I still absolutely love the makeup and I will continue to use it. And it has been a game changer for my morning routine as far as not my like peaceful morning routine, but like my morning beauty routine of getting ready for the day. That part has made it so much easier and it's so streamlined and it's so quick. I can be fully ready in like five to 10 minutes and I feel like I still feel really put together and have a full face of makeup, but it's still very natural. Like I just, I just love it so much. So anyway, my business was focusing on that. However, I was spending so much time on social media. I was glued to my phone. I was always trying to think of content ideas, always filming content, responding to customers, um, checking in with team stuff. And every waking moment that was not dedicated to my full-time job felt like it was being dedicated to my business. And even though I loved the business, I loved the products, and I loved serving my customers and helping them and teach them, like I loved the purpose of it, 
but it was draining me. I was getting so burned out and I was wasting or not wasting, but I was utilizing my time in a way that I didn't want to be. And I wanted to be able to put work away and not feel like I was letting people down while being able to prioritize my time with Tony. And I was feeling so stressful and overwhelmed and just it felt so chaotic and messy, even though I had like a workflow and I I felt organized that way. It just felt like too much was going on that I couldn't actually live the life that I wanted to be living and what I was actually working for. And so I had to make some shifts. And when I started to actually do this journaling process and getting everything out, it it was clear to me on paper what was actually happening when I hadn't taken the time to stop and really evaluate things. I just kept going because there wasn't time to stop. And when I started making these uh, or this process habit and I started to make sure that I was journaling every morning for 30 days, I didn't want to quit after the 30 days was over because it was such an eye opener to me on what needed to change. And that is eventually um, how the podcast was born because I kept the journaling process going. I started making tweaks in my business and I started shifting and I started to realize why I was doing what I was doing and what was working well, what wasn't working well, and what changes I needed to be making. So some of the things that I had realized was that I didn't want to be spending so much time on social media. I wanted more hours in my life to spend with Tony. I wanted to have a purpose with a side business because I wanted to build a side business while I was working full time. So, But I wanted that side business to have a purpose that was also building an income that was independent from my full-time income. I wanted my hours and my time for that business to be flexible and I didn't want to feel like I had to be on call and available at any time of the day. I wanted to be able to have dedicated work hours and be able to shut it off when it was time to shut that out. And What I realized is when I started journaling, I could see this and I could see what was happening and I could see how much I was burning out and losing out on family time that I didn't realize until I had started this challenge. And I knew I was busy. I knew I was overwhelmed, but I didn't realize how deeply it went into my core and how much I desired to have more free time. So through that journaling process, I started doing some shifting and I made small shifts to begin with. And that small shift to start with was to dedicate time to a morning routine and to journal in that morning routine. And the more that I did that, I had already had a a morning routine in some sense because for how many years I've been doing that business, but my previous schedule was basically waking up and going straight to my phone to answer comments, to respond to messages, to check emails, to follow up on any customer stuff, to try and get my work done right away, to post content, to get anything scheduled that needed to go out, to um, you know write up my newsletters, all this stuff that needed to be done. And then the evenings were following up on things that happened that day. And then the next morning was feeling following up on things that happened that night. And it was just a constant flow of trying to keep up. And what I realized is that even though I had a morning routine, it wasn't a calming morning routine. I woke up and I went straight into working. And so I dedicated the morning right away of getting up to something calming. And that was making sure I was still drinking coffee at that time. So it was getting a nice hot cup of coffee. And if you are a coffee drinker, if you use creamer or cream, use a good natural cream and like one of the little frother, um, like little whips where you can just push the button and it froths and spins and do that in your creamer with uh, like a heavy whipping cream. And it is so delicious because you get this foam. Anyway, that makes me miss coffee. <laughs> but um, 
it was just having that process of having a hot cup of coffee, having it really quiet in the house, being able to grab my journal, doing a Bible study, and having this sense of calming right away in the morning so that I could take time to do that. And I would end up every time I made sure I took the time to do that because some days, you know, it couldn't happen based on what was scheduled and I just needed to prioritize, you know, sleeping in a little bit more or um, I had something early I had to get to and I just couldn't make it work because life happens and that's okay if we can't do it 100% of the time. But I did notice that every day that I made time to do this, I felt so much better the day ran smoother. Even if stressful things came up, I handled it better and I didn't feel as overwhelmed because I had prioritized that time in the morning where I needed. And because I was journaling so much too, a lot of stuff was coming out and I started to realize what I really wanted out of life, out of my business, and out of my time. And that is where I started making those shifts. So I still have my business, but I have stepped back from it. I don't post on social media anymore. I basically am just focused on helping my customers when they have some issues with color matching and things like that. But I will never not tell people about that makeup because I absolutely love it. But that isn't what I'm trying to grow at this point. I will refer people to it if they want to, but otherwise, like I am trying to grow the podcast at this point and to grow this community in a way that is aligned with my values and what I want out of life so that I can help you get what you want out of life. And that is what has happened through this process. So when you're feeling really overwhelmed in any area, because this whole process can work in any area of life, not just if you have the same story as mine or if you're in the same situation as what I was, but any area of life that feels overwhelming, it feels messy, it feels like too much and you just don't know what's going on or maybe you do know what's going on, but you just don't know where to start to make those shifts. This is really going to help you because what you're wanting to do is you want to do an audit and you want to figure figure out really like the details and the nitty gritty of what is going on. So when you're feeling overwhelmed, this is what I want you to do. I want you to grab a journal or even just an old notebook. If you don't have a journal, just grab some paper, whatever you need or whatever is close, just grab something to jot down. I did purchase like a really nice hardcover journal with really nice thick pages and a nice pen and everything because I wanted this process to be really enjoyable, but you can truly use whatever you have available. You do not have to buy anything extra. So what you want to do is you want to sit down and you want to give yourself some time to answer these questions and try if you can to have a quiet space. And if that needs to be early in the morning, if it needs to be late at night, if it needs to be when kids are sleeping, if you need to have your spouse watch the kids and you go sit in the car in some silence, whatever area of life you need. Or if you can't do that and it's not possible, consider like taking them outside to play and they can play on, you know, the swing set if you have one and you set yourself up on a blanket in the yard and you just focus on journaling while they, you know, play amongst themselves. Like whatever you can do to set yourself up in a way that gives you some, as much peace and quiet as you can that is relaxing so that you can just focus on these questions and really ask yourself this about one area of life. And if you want to do a full, you know, span of everything, you certainly can, but it might feel more overwhelming doing everything at once. So it might be a little bit easier and a little bit, um, it might feel a little more achievable if you just focus on one area of life. Like when I was focusing just on the morning routine and starting that process, like that might be something that you want to do. But what you want to do is you want to first, the number one question you want to ask yourself is you want to write down what is currently happening in this area of life and how much time is being dedicated to it. So in my case, it was my side business that I really wanted to focus on. And so I needed to write down 
what was happening and how much time was actually being dedicated to it. I went and looked at my screen time. I went and looked at all the things. I looked at um, when I was getting up in the morning, how much time I was dedicating and how much time I was dedicating at night. And like, be really, really honest with yourself, whatever you're evaluating, be honest with yourself about what is what amount of time you are actually spending doing this stuff because it's probably even more than you realize. Number two question is what do you like about this current routine? And just write it down. Be honest with yourself. Nobody else has to read this. What do you really like about what is happening in this area of your life and what you are currently doing. And when I say current routine, you might feel like, oh, well, I don't have a routine and that's the problem because it feels so scattered. But whatever you're doing is probably being done fairly consistently, even if it doesn't feel like a routine. If you are repeating the same process in a similar way, it is a routine that by default has become your routine. Whether or not it was intentional, whether or not you like the process, it has become a routine. So we, if we need to make changes, we need to get you out of that routine. So that is something that you also want to um, kind of be aware of when you're looking at this. But you want to pull, um, pull out what you really like about what is happening. And then question number three is what seems to feel the most overwhelming or dis organized in this area. So you want to write down the things that you don't like and the things that aren't working and the things that feel more messy or overwhelming and just jot those down so that you can really clarify those. And then question number four is what would I like to see happening instead? And this is where you can think about if you had an ideal situation in this area of your life, no matter what area you're doing, if there was an ideal situation or an ideal process, what would that look like? And really think about it and write it down. And if you change your mind later, that's totally fine. But in this moment and what you can think of, what would you ideally like to see? And then number five, that question is, what is one simple shift that I could make to improve this area of life. So looking at what is happening and what you would like to happen, what is one area that you can make a shift that can get you closer to your ideal? So in my instance, for my example, I could dedicate to continue having a morning routine where I took time to journal in the morning. And that was something that I could do. Like it didn't mean I had to cut all my hours. I had to, you know, stop everything. But by adding something in, which felt like it was impossible because I didn't have the time, it actually gave me more time because it gave me more clarity and it also calmed me where I was able to more, um, more intentionally show up for the people that I was serving. And I just felt so much better about it. So that was one thing I could commit to. So what is one thing you could commit to that you could shift to make a change in this area? And then your final question is question number six is how would I feel if I made this change and I stuck to it consistently? And so this is just kind of forward thinking and thinking about your future self of how would you feel if you were able to make this change? What do you imagine you would feel like? And this is more just to get a sense of what changes could happen if you just made a small tweak. And maybe it's a small change. Maybe it's a big feeling that you would, you know, that a big change that you would feel. But you just want to be aware of what you feel like you would feel <laughs> if you actually made this change and stuck to it consistently. And this to just helps us really clarify that goal and our purpose of why we're making these changes. 
So what you want to do is you want to choose that one thing and then you want to make that simple change. And this is where I was saying, keep it simple, focus on one area rather than, you know, so many things so that it doesn't feel overwhelming because it's easier to just make one simple change in one area and then give yourself some time to really focus on that and challenge yourself to check in and do this journaling process either every day or if that just feels like too much, maybe it's just once a week and check in with yourself and see how you're doing and see what changes are being made and check in after four weeks, after eight weeks, after 12 weeks, whatever works best for you. But then each week, look back at your notes and see how you feel now versus how you felt when you first started. And what's really cool is you can repeat this process as needed to continue making changes. So let's say you go through this process, you make the change and you do it consistently for two weeks and you feel really good and you're like, this is something that I am going to stick to. Then do this process again and like determine if there is another thing that you can change at that point. Once you have the first one down and you feel really comfortable with it, you feel confident with it, then look at changing another small thing and then build on that and do this whole process again. Ask yourself the same questions. What's working? What's not? What what changes am, am I going to make? And you might find that at the end of a 12-week challenge for yourself that you go through these questions and you're answering them like a totally different person. And maybe you're not, maybe you are doing it the exact same way and you're still focusing on making just, you know, one or two small shifts. But if you're not giving up, that's the key. Like just keep trying. But you might also find that you feel like you're answering it like a completely different person. And all of a sudden you're making all these shifts and you're starting to live the life that you had outlined in your first practice of doing this where it actually becomes more of a reality rather than just a dream and it it is really cool when you start to see this happen and anybody can do it in any area of their life and it can make such a big difference and if you need an accountability partner you can ask a friend to do it with you you can pop into our facebook community and ask somebody in there to do it with you you can do um you can do whatever you need but having somebody to do it with you if you feel like you're not going to be able to do it yourself is a really um i think vital thing to be able to know that you can rely on somebody else to keep you accountable although i will say you are responsible to keep yourself accountable, but it's fun to go through the process with somebody else. Just know that they're not responsible for keeping you accountable. They're just there to help you keep yourself accountable. So if you actually want to um, do this with a certain area, if you're like looking at this and you're like, it, I'm so overwhelmed, I don't even know which area to start with. This is basically exactly what I set you up with, with the free guide that I made. It's the audit your habits guide. And that one focuses on five areas of our life that help us create our foundational routines. So the audit your habits just helps you to really get the, the thoughts onto paper um, to just get you started in thinking about these areas and what shifts you might want to make. And so those five foundational areas are the morning routine, the meal planning routine, the daily seven home routine, the movement routine, and the budget routine. So if those are areas that you think you might want to start with and you're not sure really how to like dive in on what to do, go to audityourhabits.com and download the free guide because that will help walk you through those five areas. And you can just pick one and go through one at a time and then um, go through that process and see what changes you can make from there. But that will help you. Otherwise, I will do a really quick recap of those six questions. When you are feeling overwhelmed, you can just ask these types of questions. Number one, what is currently happening in this area of life and how much time is being dedicated to it? Question number two, what do I like about this current routine and what is working well? Question number three, what seems to feel the most overwhelming or disorganized? What is not working well? Number four is what would I like to see happening instead? 
Question number five, what is one simple shift that I could make to improve this area of life? And question number six is how would I feel if this change was made and I stuck to it consistently? And then you want to take that process, look it over, choose that one thing to focus on and make that simple change and then challenge yourself to check in daily or weekly if you need to and challenge yourself to check in after four weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks, look back at your notes and see how you felt from the beginning versus how you feel now. And then just repeat as needed to continue making those small shifts so that you can eventually be living the life that you really want to be living. Did you love that episode or learn something useful? If so, would you do me a huge favor? My goal is to grow this podcast and help as many women as I can break free from the overwhelm so they can truly enjoy their life. The best way for me to do this is for you to leave a five-star written review on your podcast app and to share this episode with a friend or in your Instagram stories. I appreciate you being here. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you on the next episode. Take care.